Can you tell me your name and how you spell it? Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, Harrington, H-A-R-R-I-N-G-T-O-N. And what is your position? I'm the visual art teacher at Elkhart Central High School. Okay, and would you be able to explain what happened today? Uh, today was a noontime lecture for the Youth Art Month. It's a national exhibition of student artwork to bring highlights to what area students in each city can do. And so across the country, um, there are different art shows that you will find that are highlighting the work of elementary through high school students in a variety of venues. Uh, the lectures that the Midwest Museum does is part of that series, so they've invited art teachers for four Thursdays in a row for noon talks. Great, and why is art important? It's important for so many different reasons. Um, as I said earlier during the uh, presentation, that we do live in a visual culture, and we are co constantly surrounded by images. And so our students are constantly, you know, they're looking at their phones, and they are being bombarded by all these images. And so art can reach them in a lot of different ways, not just as a creative and expressive um, manner, but also learning to navigate the world around them as they pick up how advertising and marketing is trying to get them to think a certain way. So when you are talking about the visual elements of color and line and shape, or principles of design like pattern and contrast, you're teaching them how to see the world around them, and then art can then help them be expressive of that world too. Great, and earlier you talked about how um, people that were not talented in other art fields mm -hmm. were put into your visual arts class. Mm -hmm. How are you able to deal with that? Sometimes it takes time because they're resistant to being there. A lot of times they come in and their first words out of their mouth are, I don't want to be here, I don't like art, I can't draw. And so you take time to slowly build that relationship with them. A lot of encouragement, giving them those exercises to start building their confidence. And then once they start to see that, oh, wait a minute, I can do this a little bit then you start to get them and then they want to start coming hopefully some of them never do but a lot of them do and then we get them in other art classes and they continue to take classes throughout their high school career interesting so they're required to take an arts class right correct they have to take a fine arts credit so that could be music it could be singing it could be theater or it could be the visual arts okay and what about for someone who's very artistic in, let's say, music, dance, you know, the performing arts, mm -hmm. but what if they're, you know, scared of their visual art ability? You get that sometimes, yeah. um, and so we, we work with that too. We tell them that uh, art and music many times share the same visual language, like a principle of design is rhythm. Well, you have rhythm in music. There are patterns in music. There are patterns in art. And so you can try to bring them in that way. And then as they start to understand that expressiveness has shared characteristics, they start to get a little more comfortable. Okay. And would you be able to describe a little bit, you know, we saw your lecture, mm -hmm. but maybe one specific instance of an artist or a student you've had that has come in and really blossomed? Um, yeah, my one student who I met for the first time in drawing one, I think it was fall semester of 2015, very quiet, very reserved, showed a little bit of ability, but never talked at all. He came back, and I kept encouraging him and saying, look, you, you have some ability, you can see, and he's come back, and now he's in my AP program. When we went, I took him on a walking architecture field trip um, last semester, and he opened up and he was talking with me and sharing experiences outside of art and now he comes in and his attendance is a bit better and he is showing I mean I showed some of his work of some of the best things that were up there is how he's seeing form and so he has really blossomed as you said as as an artist and I hope he continues he's a junior so I'll have him for another year great and you've touched a little bit on this but what are some of the challenges that you face as an art teacher Time, money, um, those are the biggest ones. We have a lot of expectations as educators. Uh, it's not just about teaching our content area. I mean, we do act as parent, counselor, doctor. We have a lot of different roles. And so art is p only part of what I do. I try to teach them of being you know, a good human being, being part of society. 
And that can be very challenging because some of some backgrounds are very, very difficult and kids struggle. They come to school from a lot of different backgrounds and some of them have less support than others. And so that is a huge challenge as we try to work with them and make them feel like, yes, you're important, yes, you belong, and yes, I care about you and I want you to do well, not just in art, but in everything. That's great, and do you wanna add anything? Uh, this has been a great experience. I really appreciate the Midwest Museum of Art giving me this opportunity to actually speak. I haven't done it for quite some time in front of a group of adults, and so it was really fun for me to be able to do this today, too. All right, thank you. Thank you very much.